On July 31st, more than 200 people came together at Phoenix's First Church UCC for a town hall on Arizona prison conditions. They came to demand new leadership and to hold elected officials accountable. The culture of desensitization has to end, and it's a cultural issue, and it starts at the top. And that's why I'm calling for the removal and replacement of the director, Chuck Ryan. We are all aware that the leadership of the Arizona Department of Corrections has proven that it's not capable of addressing, addressing safety issues and medical issues. Even ADOC staff has finally come forward to confess that something has to change. The emotional and painful stories of loss and neglect inside our prisons moved many to tears and outrage. Lawmakers promised to come up with solutions and to take action. And just one week later, Arizona Department of Corrections Director Chuck Ryan announced under pressure from thousands of families across Arizona demanding change that he's finally stepping down. Big news tonight out of the Arizona Department of Corrections. The director Charles Ryan is retiring. So director Charles Ryan did not make one error. There was a pattern of failure and it's hard to rebuild trust after that. This is the moment for us to come together as a state, all the stakeholders, all the people who are impacted by this to make a decision that's in the best interests of all the people. The voices of directly impacted people are crucial to reform because they have first-hand knowledge about the violence and brokenness of the system, which is often hidden from public view. Governor Ducey, as you conduct this search for a new director, understand that none of the voices that you're currently listening to has the experience or insight to fully inform your decision. That's why AFSC Arizona is calling on you, Governor Ducey, to implement a Citizens Advisory Board that must include formerly incarcerated people and their loved ones. Because systemic change is so desperately needed. Because your constituents are relying on you to get this right. Because this must stop. Handcuffed to Freedom is going to be a documentary that explores the challenges that people face when they re-enter society after prison. Now what's going to make this documentary any different from anything else that's been done? Well, it's going to be made by me. Someone who has personal experience in this. Bye, who am I? Um, that's a question I've asked myself many times. I would like to call Nate McCowan up to talk to you a little bit. He is a filmmaker, a writer, and an advocate for sentencing reform. Um, I am someone who has made some bad decisions. One night when I was 22 years old, I made the decision to get behind the wheel of a car when I shouldn't have. And those decisions have caused some horrible consequences. I got in a car accident and because of that decision, a man is dead. In my years in prison, I went through some dark times. I bottled it up. I hardened myself. I got angry to distract from the pain. And one of the things that helped pull me through that darkness was an idea I had. See, I would see my friends, they would get out of prison and they would have it in their mind that they want to start a new life, they want to do it right, they want to succeed. And I would see them back on the yard a year or two later and I kept asking myself what is it that makes it so difficult to transition from prison to society and then I thought I should make a documentary about this I was getting out soon I could let this beat me end up in and out of prison for the rest of my life or maybe just maybe I can make something positive come from all of this tragedy maybe I can help other people that were like me find hope. And then I came up with Handcuff to Freedom, a documentary that follows the stories 
of people who are making that transition to tell their stories. This gave me a new sense of hope because I was like, this could actually help people. That was the moment that I had something to fight for. And that was the moment that I found hope for the future. I started writing journal entries of my experience before I got out and my mom, she posted them on social media and she started a GoFundMe so that I could raise the money to make this film. The equipment that I'm using today is from that fundraiser because people around the world took the chance and decided that they wanted to give me a second chance. And that's the power of community. When, when I succeed, it will be because of the support that people have shown me. And I want to find a way that we can offer those same opportunities to everyone who gets out of prison. That's what this is going to be about.